in the scriptures and then he died, was resurrected, sits at the right hand of the Father. If, all, if you believe all those things, then you have to believe as well that according to his word, that he will return one of these days. And there are signs in the sky that will point to those moments. Now, there's this uh, thing going on, going around, um, that uh, uh, Hagee, uh, Brother Hagee, has written. It's called The Four Blood Moons. Have you all heard of that? Some of you have and some of you have not. It's a pretty phenomenal thought. And uh, today I share it with you as a thought. I'm not trying to prophesy anything. But I want to share some things with you, and there's a reason for this. I want you to think about... After the flood, what did God do to make a promise to us? Put a rainbow where? So that every time we looked at the sky and we saw a rainbow, we'd be reminded of his covenant with us, right? Not only that, in the very first in Genesis chapter 1, this is an amazing thing. This is what God said. Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, it says, Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. Psalm 104, verse 19 says, He appointed the moon for seasons. That's amazing. And what we hear in Luke chapter 21, verse 25, and there will be signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to happen, look up. Lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Well, maybe it doesn't mean a lot to you, but I want you to know it means a lot to me. And I'm looking up. In fact, the psalmist said this, you know, look up, look up unto the hills. Look unto the hills. You have to look up to the hills. From whence cometh your help because your help cometh from the Lord. Here's what I know. There's a lot of things going on in this earth today that don't make a lot of sense to us. There are things that are happening in Syria, Israel. We're looking at what's happening through the uh, Islam and the Muslim nations and having just been in a nation where that they are being taken over uh, through uh, Muslim evangelism, uh, which is, by the way, with money. They, they come in and they buy the land. Uh, in, uh, in Togo, where we were uh, five years ago, it was not so, but now 59% of the nation is Muslim. And they have become Muslim. They came in, uh, Gaddafi came in and, and offered money to the president and all kinds of things to become a Muslim nation. And they didn't want to become a Muslim nation. And uh, at least the president didn't want to do that. So they sent in the, the Muslim uh, evangelists who came in with money in their pockets. And they came in and they gave people money and took their homelands and gave them money to become Muslim. And now the nation is 59%. See, we as Christians have to understand that all the good that we do while we do it and we can give food, we can give clothing, we can do all those things and we will continue to do it because that's the way Jesus is and that's what he does in reaching out. But if that's all we do, we can't beat the Muslims at their game. God called us to walk in signs and wonders. You can't just feed them and not show them a miracle. What is the difference? What is the difference in us and every other people in the earth? Is that we can, we can walk not only in the compassions of Jesus, but in the power of a risen Savior.
That not only can we feed you, but we can get your bodies healed by praying for you in the name of Jesus. Do you understand? In these days when confusion reigns and men's hearts are failing them because of fear, when we don't know what our economy is going to be, when we live in the fantasy that somehow everything's just going to be all right and we'll just let it go, there are agendas that are dark. There are agendas that are evil trying to take over this earth earth. And as we sit uh, by and watch it happen and don't understand that God is calling us in this hour. It's not about fighting it out in the workplace. It's about becoming that vessel of God that's filled with power, that walks with signs and wonders and has a signpost ministry that points people to the only true and living God. Amen. We can't answer all of this. You know God's got a plan. How many of you know that? And we don't even understand all of it. We don't even know how to read a caution sign. (laughs) But the one thing we do know is that our God, He knew the end from the beginning. Not only in the cosmic sense of this whole big wide world, but in your life and mine. He knows the end from the beginning. He already knows what it's going to take and what he's got ahead for us. He already knows what he's doing. If I didn't trust him implicitly, I can tell you my heart would fail for fear. Sometimes I want to stick my head in the ground and say, oh, well, you know. Uh, yeah, who was it that Pollyanna, you know, just lived her life skipping around? And sometimes I want to be that. I just want to kind of be an airhead and, <laughs> and not really know. But God called me for such a time as this. And He's called you for such a time as this to be aware that what goes on around us has great significance. That there is a prophetic thing happening in the earth today. And I tell you this because you're going to start hearing a lot about these four blood moons. And I want to take you for just a moment before we close through a story. It's a true story. It's history. His story. And how Israel impacts us as a nation Israel is definitely, we know, the Bible calls them, God calls them, his people, his chosen people. We understand that the Gentiles, that's us, were grafted in to the olive branch. You know, So we know that we're a part of at least spiritual Israel. We know that because we now are all one people, those who name the name of Christ, and we are chosen. We're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. That's who we are as the church. Now, Israel was chosen by God, and the and, and purpose of Israel was to show forth God. That was their purpose. They were supposed to show. And in fact, the, all the nations of the world knew They were afraid of Israel because God was in their midst. They knew that. Israel was a signpost to this living God. And uh, through Israel's uh, uh, refusal to follow God, we know they came out of Egypt. When they went in and out of captivity, uh, went into the promised land. They uh, built a temple. All those things where the name of God uh, could uh, reside. They did all of those things. But through the years, they continued to go back and forth in their following of this mighty God. They would forget the signs and wonders and miracles that God did to bring them out. They would forget the greatness of God and they would get caught up in their lives. And and then they would start uh, being unequally yoked with those who did not believe in this God. And, And they'd get into nations where in captivity sometimes they would start marrying and intermarrying with heathens. That's the issue. Do you understand that? It wasn't about the color of their skin. It was about marrying and intermarrying heathens, not being equally yoked. And let me tell you why that's important. Because when you go into covenant like that, 
that covenant will begin to supersede the covenant you have with God. And before you know it, you're in trouble. It's hard to live that life being unequally yoked. Some of us in this room have to live that life every day, and I admire you. Because, uh, you know, we, sometimes we, we got married before we knew better and all those kinds of things understood. But let me say this to you young people. You don't, you, you don't think it's a big deal now. It's all about love. But I'm going to tell you something. When the blush of all of that fades, you've got you've to figure out who you're going to spend the rest of your life with and whether or not you have the same vision. And if you don't have a vision for God, I'm telling you right now, you chose a hard life. Tell you before you do it. I'll stand with you even if you do it. But you chose a hard life. And you see often, and what would happen is that the children of Israel would turn away from God. And actually they were called then uh, to go whoring after other things. They turned from their husband, God, and they had other lovers. And so uh, as time goes along, uh, they go into captivity. And we know there have been terrible, terrible things that have happened to, uh, to the Jews through the years. We know of some of those things. But in the year 1492, everybody know that year 1492? Uh, Jews, the Jews had been scattered all over Europe, all over the world, especially in Europe. And there were large concentrations in the nation of, uh, of Spain, in the country of Spain. And uh, there became an inquisition and all kinds of things started happening. The Jews began to be persecuted and put to death. And uh, there was a man named Christopher Columbus. Do you remember him? Do you remember that out of Spain, there was a ship or some ships who came and came to the New World? I don't know if you realize that there was also an exodus of Jews who were escaping from the inquisitions and the persecutions of what was going on in Spain. Isn't it interesting that our nation was established in a time when God was giving the Jews an exodus as well as bringing to our nation uh, a desire for worship, freedom in worship. And I'm not going to give you a big history lesson on that, just enough for you to hear this. That was in 1492. Now, through the years, we know what Israel went through. Most recent, our understanding is of Hitler, Germany, and the World War. When the Jews were exterminated, six million Jews were killed. Do you know that today there are people trying to uh, present a a story, because it's all it is, that this never happened? Did you know that? Yeah, it's insane. And the, I've been in Germany, and there, it's very being uh, proposed, especially in Germany, where uh, they want to say that that was all made up. Uh, I have been to the death camps. I have stood in the, in the gas chambers. I have seen where they made lampshades out of their hair. It is real. The Jews only had a promise, and that was that someday that they would return to Israel. And when they returned to Israel, the desert would bloom like a rose. That God would bless them again, and there they were scattered all over the world. And then in the, in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, there became a desire in the 1920s, 1930s, and 1940s, a desire to see their homeland again. And Jews from all over the world began to make their way. And then came the great persecution when six million Jews were killed. The thought that they could ever be brought together in a nation again. In fact, uh, one of the prophets said this, could, could Israel, could it ever happen? Could it happen in a day? And we know that in 1947, they became a nation. The UN sanctioned Israel as a nation against all odds. This little place on the map, which by the way, today they are producing maps that no longer have Israel on it. There's an agenda. See, we want to think that it's about a lot. It's all about this. (laughs) Everything in the world's about this. It's that little nation sitting there believing God, believing the promises of God, and God is in her midst. 1947-48 was a 
what is called a blood moon, and it's a time when it's like an eclipse, but the moon turns red. 1967, Israel went to war again. It was a six-day war. God came through, and they won again against all odds. you got to understand, there's this little nation, and all the nations of the world, you know, that's what will happen at the end, is that all the nations of the world will turn, and they'll be alone, and God himself will show up and say, I will fight for you. That's what's going to happen. Amen. Those of you who don't understand the significance of our nation supporting Israel, it's important for you to understand. We should pray for the peace of Jerusalem. That is, we are called to do so and to stand with Israel. So in the, in the uh, uh, Six-Day War, a blood moon showed up again on the calendar. Uh, kind of interesting, I think. Uh, there are going to be four blood moons never they don't have this recorded in history that ever in a space of about a year, there are going to be four blood moons and it starts in, in 2014 through 2015. Two of those blood moons, one will show up on Rosh Hashanah, the beginning day of Rosh Hashanah, which is their feast, one of their feasts, uh, and the other on the first day of Tabernacles, the Feast of Tabernacles. Now there are people, there are prophets who are getting excited. Because they're seeing signs and wonders in the sky. But I want you to know, and I want, to, I, I want you to have understanding, that God is doing something. I, I'm not going to suppose that I know what all that is about. And there are those who, who feel that they are scholars who can tell you what they think is going to happen. I don't think that people know so much what's going to happen. But I will tell you one thing, something's going to happen. We live in a moment, a, a, a strategic and prophetic moment. And just as those wise men, they were called wise men because they, they looked up and they saw a fulfillment and they got out of whatever was their comfortable space and made their way into a land they didn't even know, but they saw that something was happening. I want you to know, it looks like everything, as, as they used to say, you know, it, everything's going to hell in a handbasket. Uh, it, it looks like things are breaking down. It looks like our society is in trouble, and, and certainly it is. And when you look around you, it's just hard. Uh, am I living in the same world you're living in? Sure it is. Do I keep a positive outlook as best I can? You know, I do. I just believe God, and he can still put money in the mouth of fish. And, you know, I know God. He's, he's awesome. And so I trust God. But when I look around me, when I hear, the more I hear, when I see what our children are going through in public school, when I, when I have, we have all these educators in our congregation and I hear what they deal with on a daily basis, when I see what the standards are, when I see the home in so much trouble and husbands and wives are not in agreement and living separate lives and the children are really not being parented and I, see, I look around and I see all of these things, it would be so easy to move into fear and to become a doomsday kind of person. But that's not who God called us to be. He says, the worse it gets, the brighter the light. He says, you arise and shine for your light has come. There is an outshining of the glory of God. And in our lives and in the church, the church will be at her best when the world is at its worst. God has called us to rise up in this hour. And I don't know what's going to happen, but I know God is in charge. And I'm excited to see what's next. I'm not dreading the future. I'm not waiting for the other shoe to drop. I believe that God has called us into victory and glory. And as the church, we must arise in this hour. We've got to lay aside fear. Anxiety has to go. We've got to deal with these issues. We can't live our lives drugged out by all the drugs that, the, that we're being offered on in this day. And trust me, there are times when I want to take a pill. Not, not, no condemnation on anyone who is... Who, who, who needs and is using medication of any sort. But do you understand that this is a curse on our nation? This anxiety 
that, that overtakes us until we can't even breathe and, and we have panic attacks and all those things. I know from what, whence I come. And I'm preaching to myself. I had one sleepless night this week. Couldn't go to sleep because I was anxious. And you know what? It made me so mad. We've got, you have to be militant about this. You've got to be militant about your peace. You've got to fight for it. You've got to fight for your confidence in God. You have to fight for your faith. I'd like to tell you it's all easy, but it's not. Sometimes you got to get in there and you got to, I mean, you got to fight. You got to duke it out until you get to your place of peace. You have to make a decision that I am not, I'm not going to zombie myself out on medication because I can't handle it. I'm telling you, God's got a plan for your life. He has a plan for my life. He's got a plan for this earth. Our God is going to triumph. There's a day coming. Oh, we might be hard getting there, but there's there's a day coming when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. And he will present to himself a bride that is without spot or wrinkle. And he will bring together a body that is in one accord where we will come into agreement and line ourselves up with the word of God. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. I'm not going to send you out in the world with a light, nice little story and poem and make you feel good for 30 minutes. I'm not going to do it. I can't do it. This is life and death. There, there are millions in the valley of decision. And they need a sign. And the sign... You know how the Christians knew themselves? Knew who they were in the early days during the persecution? How they could identify who they were? There was a sign of a fish. Most people believe that the reason they chose that sign was because it, it, rem, it reminded everyone of the miracle of the loaves and the fishes. They even knew each other and were reminded of who they were by a miraculous event. We have to begin to know one another see, with the glory of God and the power of God through the miraculous working power of a living God. Amen. We are the signs. Jesus was that sign sent, and then he left us as a sign of the love of God, the power of God. Hallelujah. As we go, we go as a people, I hope, who understand that we live in a prophetic moment. Not quite sure what all this means in Israel, but listen, you, you, you can't bury your head in the sand. You have to look at what God is doing. You need to see what God's doing in Israel because the United States has always been connected to what God's doing in Israel. It's the truth. We were one of the few allies that, was, that stood with them in 1947. Uh, we've been one of the few allies who have stood with them all through the years. But we were at one time a haven for God. God used us to be a place the exodus could occur. That's in, we were the promised land. What happens in Israel affects the whole world always. If you think that anybody has control over this world... God knows the prophetic. He's already prophesied to us. We don't know the details, but we do know one thing. <laughs> we know that there's, a, there's an end and a good end to all of this in God for those who follow him. Amen. Father, we stand before you this morning. Sharpen our awareness. 
our sensitivity and our perception and understanding that we may look unto the hills from whence cometh our help. That, Lord, we would understand that in the sky you are sending us signposts that are pointing to your return. For that, Lord, we are grateful. It encourages us to continue to believe that you are the God of a promise that you will fulfill. Over every life in this room right now, Lord, I pray for those of us who have faced anxiety, those of us who battle with it daily, sometimes hour by hour. I pray now that that spirit of fear be broken off our lives in Jesus' name. We come out of agreement with the spirit of fear now in Jesus' name. We command it to loose us, loose our minds, loose our souls and our emotions. Spirit of fear, I serve you notice now in Jesus' name. And I command you to stop. Cease all operations now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And Lord, in a moment when we, the devil thought he could give us that final kick and final blow. May we rise up out of the ashes and may we begin to declare the goodness of God and the greatness of this God that we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, that all over this room right now, that people are sensing the liberty that comes through the power of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, that the name of Jesus has the power to set us free. That the spirit of dread is broken now in Jesus' name. That the lying spirit now that has come to intimidate us that the power of those lies is broken now in Jesus' name. I thank you that there's a release in this house of hope and joy and faith. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. There's a few of you. I, I know you're saying, look, I, I want to get completely free. I want to get, I, I, I know I, I need to get completely free. It's me. I want you to make your way quickly. Pastor Stanley, if you'll come, come, come. Yes. Thank you, sweetheart. Who else? You say, that's me. I am, I am done over with. I, I'm tired of living in this anxiety. If that's you, I want you to come quickly. Come on, be brave. Be brave enough. This is your moment to say, serve notice. Say, this is it for me. I, I, I am so done. I'm tired of the enemy. He's Hallelujah. I bless the name of the Lord. I know, I understand. Where anxiety, anxiety begins to rule our lives and we, we don't do things because we're too afraid to do them and we're always arranging our lives and keeping our lives in place so that somehow we don't have to be exposed to the things that we're afraid of. And the enemy has kept you limited and kept you in a place where you can't even break free to be able to do what God's called you to do and to be who God's called you to be because you're so busy trying to keep your life safe and without all of that. It's time for us to say no more to this. I'm telling you right now, the enemy has a plan, but God has a plan that's greater. Come on closer to me up here. Hallelujah, honey, go down if you would. Hallelujah, I need elders. I need you to all come. Come on, come on, pray. Yes, elders, everyone. Hallelujah. Listen, I want to tell you something. This thing has got to stop and we cannot allow the spirit of this age the Bible says, and Jesus said it himself, that as the time draws near to an end, that men's hearts will fail because of fear.
There is so much fear out there everywhere. There's so much fear. It is producing so much that we have to be careful that we don't find ourselves a part of it. So today, in the name of Jesus, some of you have been fearful about your health. I want to say to you right now, and in fact, you're not up here. Who is it out there that that the enemy uses uh, against your mind about your health? Just raise your hand. You don't have to come down. All right. I see you. Anybody else? Okay, I see you. I want to tell you, this is a word from God right now. And I hear the Lord saying that no longer, no longer, no longer will you fear about your health. And I break the generational curses off of your life right now. That comes down to the generations that from this time forward, you will walk in the peace of God regarding your health. That you can say, I am the healed of God. And you don't let the enemy get in there any longer. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't you let what's happened in your family. I don't care if grandma, uh, brother, sister, mama, aunt, uncle. It doesn't matter anymore. You say, I'm the one who breaks this chain in my, in my family. I'm the one. I release you in the name of Jesus. There's some of you who are dreading about uh, business. It's business or your job. There's something, uh, if you're not up here, but you're there, you, you, you worry about it. It's very specific. It's about that job, about the business, about income, money. Who is that? I'm talking about, you know, where you get tormented. You know what I'm talking about. I speak to you now in Jesus' name and I declare over your life that the the great provider, Jehovah Jireh, has come and I break the power right now of the fear that has come upon you and, and paralyzed you and kept you from moving forward to believe God and this God who is able to make a way where there seems to be no way, I say, you are free in Jesus' name. Yes, surabon de la basa. Fear about children. Fear about children. Come on, raise your hand if you say it's me. I have anxiety here. Comes against me. All right, I see you. I understand that fear. We want our kids to be what they should be. We want all of that. We, I get it. But I tell you, when we release them to the Lord, it's a hard thing. And when that fear starts to take over, it, it'll make us do things we shouldn't do. It'll, it'll keep, instead of our believing God and resting in the peace of God regarding our children who are disciples taught of the Lord and, and great is their peace and undisturbed composure, I still pray that over my children and my grandchildren. Because I'll tell you, their disciples taught of the Lord. I, I can't take all that full responsibility. I trust God to do it. Their disciples taught of the Lord right now in Jesus' name. I come against that tormenting spirit. And that spirit that comes to accuse. It's an accusing spirit. I bind its power over your life right now. And I say those voices have to stop. No more. I break the power of the enemy that comes against you and accuses you. And makes you feel guilty and condemned. And I say no more in the name of Jesus. And I release my children. Come on, release your children right now. There is therefore now no condemnation. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Trust God now. Hallelujah. Trust in the peace of God. There's a song that we sing during this season. It's called Joy to the World. But there's a verse in that song. I don't know if I'll even remember it all. But it, it, it starts with, He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders wonders Now listen, joy to the world, amen. But I want you to know, he rules the world. He rules the world. He rules my world. He rules your world. He rules your world, Stacia. Even if it feels out of control, he rules your world. And you know what? I'm not worried about this 
earth go spinning out of control. I'm not worried about any of that stuff. I'm not worried about a, a big bang explosion that may come. I'm not worried about any of that because he rules the world. And he makes the nations prove see, the glory of his righteousness and wonders of his love. And wonders of his love, and wonders, wonders of his love. Hallelujah. There is no real peace outside of him. He is the Prince of Peace. You cannot have peace without Jesus. Some of you in this room, the word of God was penetrating into your heart and into your mind. And we're praying for you, but the truth is, the Word sets us free. When we know that the Prince of Peace has come, when we know He came to us and called us out by name, you should know that this morning. I know this is, I even wore green velvet because it's Christmas. And I love Christmas time and all that, but I'll tell you, it's a hard time for me. It's a hard time for people in the church. People say, oh, how are you doing, Pastor? And I said, well, I'm trying to gear myself up. Because people go through lots of crises at Christmas. I wish it weren't so, but they do. But, you know, that's the way it is. That's what we signed on for. To pray for you and to be here for you and, 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 and to understand that, that everything isn't navigated so easily and that sometimes what you have to walk through, especially at a holiday time, Seems like there's all kinds of pressures that come. But here's the deal. He's still Jesus today as he was a month ago before you got into Christmas. He's still the same. Don't, don't, don't lay down your faith during Christmas this year. Don't let yourself get defeated. Don't, don't, don't just uh, uh, separate yourself and, and start. Don't lay down in all of this. Stop living in the fantasy. Because that day comes and goes. And the disappointment that comes afterwards, it's not worth it. Let's just do it. Use, let's have fun. Amen. Enjoy it. And let it go. <laughs> December 26th, drop it, leave it, let it go. Let it you understand what I'm saying? Treat it with honor. You know that. I, I, you know I love it. We celebrate. My goodness. At the same time, do not be inordinate about that. Do not let that become an idol in your life. This Christmas, let's love Jesus. Let's love him. And when you love Jesus, you love people. Now, that's the way that is, right? All right. We love you guys. <laughs> I know. I, I meant to be out early, but... But Jesus, I hope you'll all come back. People have worked really hard. He's going to love it. Please come back tonight at 6 o'clock. I'll look for it. And bring somebody if you can. Amen. God bless you as you go. Go out and change somebody's life this week. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord is. Let her receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. Heaven and nature see, and 